guys, I am Actual Vision, and welcome to another Driver Spotlight. Today, where you can see already on screen, I am joined by Mikhail Hizal. He is a 20-year-old Turkish sim racer for Team Redline. He is a mechanical engineering student, a 2019 Toyota GR Super Cup champion, and a 2019 FIA GTC World Champion. Mikhail, how are you doing? And give us a little intro about yourself. First of all, thank you, mate, for having me here. Uh, it's a pleasure for being here, doing this interview with you. But uh, yeah, hello, guys. My name is Mikhail Hesau. Uh, yeah, but how are you doing, mate? I'm okay, thank you. I'm, I'm all the better for uh, for having you on here. I've been following your journey uh, within sim racing for quite some time. Um, and, you know, obviously, we're going to get to the climax of uh, of your. <laughs> Yeah, that could be taken the wrong way. But yeah, the climax of your career so far, obviously last year, being crowned the GT Sport World Champion. But this is all about your journey, how you've got to this point. Um, so really, how did it all begin for you in sim racing, uh, Mikhail? Where did it start? Where did the love of it begin? Or just gaming in general? Um, When I was a kid, uh, I used to love playing around with those toy, uh, toy cars before. And when my parents saw me, uh, that I love playing with those toy, toy cars around. They were actually buying me a PlayStation One with Grand Turismo 2. <gasps> and since then, um, how shall I say it? I've been falling in love with racing games in general. So basically, when every other kid of my age was kind of like playing those shooter games or some other games, I was still stuck playing those racing games. Uh, till today, if I can say that. And, uh, I think with the release of Grand Turismo 6, one year after that, there was like a <clears throat> special Christmas event going on where we still had those seasonal events on. And one of those challenges was basically to try to overtake as many cars as possible and also setting the fastest lap time with that. And still, um, till, to this, well, till to that day, I'm still playing with a controller instead of uh, with a wheel, which is basically faster in my opinion. Um, but still, at the end of that challenge, I was placing myself fifth of the world uh, ranking, basically. And then I was kind of like asking the first, uh, the guy finishing first on that challenge, if I can basically join the team, which is basically the line. But then in my head, I was kind of like thinking, hey, that would be kind of like impossible. Because I wasn't even expecting myself to ending up in Team Redline after only doing this one challenge. And then two days afterwards, he was messaging me, hey, you can join us. That's where my sim racing journey began to start with. That's incredible. Obviously, Team, Re team Redline, for me, probably the most well-known sim racing team in the world with the likes of Lando Norris and Max Verstappen. And of course, now GT Sport World Champion, Mikhail Hassau. It's been a while since you've been there. So where was the crossover period for you? Uh, obviously, you love sim racing. You've been playing PlayStation 1. Uh, on GT uh, Gran Turismo 2 um, up until Gran Turismo 6. I say my favorites are actually Gran Turismo 5. Uh, I loved that game. Um, I was just, I 100% completed it. I got all of the trophies. I was a proper nerd for it. Um, on the oh, are you lucky, three. man? <laughs> oh, man. It was just such a good game. Um, so I can't get the Platinum Trophy anymore, unfortunately, because they have shut down the online. Oh. oh wow yeah of course yeah wow that's 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 not good i did this when it was out though so like it, when it was like new in the first year um so that was um a long long time ago now it's crazy to think how long ago it was where was the crossover period for you then so you obviously you fell in love with uh, i say sim racing or, or just racing casually where did you think do you know what i'm gonna take this on here uh, I, i'm I, you know you've just become a member of team redline was there at any point uh, uh a transitional moment where you thought I could become world champion on this. Well, I mean, uh, when I was telling you earlier that I didn't even think about joining Redland in uh, first place because I was kind of like thinking about, hey, I could still ask him about it, but in the end, like realistically, uh, I wouldn't be joining their team. But then after joining their team, I was like, oh, wow. I somehow did it. <laughs> somehow I managed to join the team in the end. And then that was the moment where I really wanted to improve myself, like improving my speed, consistency, and kind of like trying to help my teammates too. And then once Grand Turismo Sport came out, um, with the whole FIA championship stuff and so on, I was kind of like telling myself, hey, you need to 
uh, to form well to kind of like give a fair how shall I say it? Uh, to give something back to my teammates you know and as well as to my team because without them I wouldn't be the driver I a driver I am today so basically um, that's why I really tried hard to basically have a lot of success in those FIA championships and I'm truly grateful for that yeah that's definitely a trait of a, of a, a potential or a current champion uh, you know moving into a team obviously when you're an individual uh, racing on your own not in a team if you let anyone down it's just yourself and sometimes you can just deal with that but with joining a team your ex expectations in your own mind if you are uh, someone who thinks positively towards championships if you want to become the very best you will indeed take on that psyche that i need to prove myself not only to myself but to my team i need to uphold their name um you know i need to be something that they are proud of uh, and also you've got you know people who are the very top of the real world racing spectrum in max Verstappen and lando norris uh, so you kind of almost want to impress them would that be correct in saying that Ah, oh, not really it's just um i don't want to be so slow you know like still showing my performance but then still kind of like saying hey this, this result i've managed to achieve on the uh, life is kind of like for you guys and that's why what i always want to achieve uh when i basically travel to one of those live events and basically try to go for the win because um i mean everybody who's kind of like going to those world events or basically to any championship they always want to win it after all basically with the high competition we have there it's so hard to basically get a consistent good result throughout every single live event and kind of like um ending up with a good result is always a satisfaction stuff and also kind of like saying hey this result is kind of like for you guys and that's what i always want to achieve i'm not kind of like thinking about hey max or seven may watch us or maybe my other teammates uh, obviously i still drive on my own like kind of like looking after myself but they're still kind of saying at the end of the live event hey this result is for you guys and i hope you're proud of that <laughs> well bono's the biggest star at trl anyway so um and i won't have anyone say anything different i love that guy <laughs> <laughs> um bono, bono's such a lovely bloke um so you've gone gt uh, gt6 sorry you've done these uh, overtaker challenges you've got to the fifth in in the world you've then joined team redline gt sport comes out and this is where you've really shot into stardom here we've got a picture of you with the uh, trophy where you won the european uh, championships there with um with adam and geo but can you please give a little explanation for anybody that's watching who doesn't really understand the qualifying system for gt sport uh, obviously the World Championships and the Manufacturers' Cup. So the Nations Cup and the Manufacturers' Cup. How do you qualify to get into those competitions? Because a lot of competitions, it's just, oh, you do a time trial, you're the quickest in the world, or there's a couple of races online, and you know, in, in over a four week period, you then get blown away to the LAN event. So how does it actually work with GT Sport? What de dedication have you had to put in to get to where you are? Um, first of all, we have to say that um, in every single season, they have changed the regulations ever so slightly. For example, the amount of players who are allowed to go to a live event has been reduced um, ever so slightly, I think, from 2019 to 2020, for example. But um, uh, when you play a Grand Tourist School Sport, obviously everybody must have seen the sports mode at the top of the screen. And basically, if you enter the sports mode there, uh, you can actually do the, FI the online championship of the Nations Cup as well as for the Manufacturers Cup. And as for the Nations Cup, if you want to qualify yourself for one of those live events there, you need to be, uh, depending on which region you are, in my case, the European region, uh, in the top 10 from Europe, and basically within the top two or top three from your country. And if you are full, uh, basically fulfilling those, uh, uh, how should I say it? Uh, Requirements. Fulfilling the task there in the end, then basically you are allowed to go there. And as for the Manufacturers Cup one, um, they have also introduced a new sort of global Manufacturers Cup ranking, which basically says, um, as we have five different regions in Grand Tourist for Sport, that only three of them are going to make it to the live event. So basically the best three out of those five regions are going to make it through the live event, basically. And 
with that in mind, you also have to try to basically be the best driver from your manufacturer, from your region. Still, kind of like um, compare yourself with the other guys from the other region. And if you are within the top three of your chosen manufacturer, which also needs to be within the top 12 overall manufacturer, then you can also do the Manufacturer's Cup uh, on a live event. And I gotta say, you have to basically put a lot of time into it. Like in my case, I'm lucky enough that I don't really have to practice that much because I always like to see or basically watch the other drivers driving so that I can always uh, copy the strategy, copy the breaking points and always adapt it to myself pretty quickly uh, because I had to find a different way of practicing as quickly as possible because of my study and by <laughs> basically finding out that method I was kind of like lucky to have this in, my, uh, in me basically but yeah um, as I said you have to put a lot of time into the into it which is pretty hard yeah absolutely uh, another guy Tom Lartelow uh, for Loche Storm he wasn't able to go to Australia the same as you because of your studies so you've got you know not only the <laughs> You've got to be on top of your game to be the best in the world at this game specifically. But then to study for a degree, what you're studying for right now, like that takes some huge dedication. So again, I tip my hat to you. Um, very, very good work from you indeed. Um, and definitely uh, someone for younger people to coming up in the sim racing scene to be looking up to, especially uh, yourself and Storm, who are trying to balance two huge things in the grand scale of life. Um, you know, being the very best in the world at anything is tough enough as it is without having to study on top of that. Um, Thank so you. So you managed to win the European Tour. That was uh, the event that we're watching on the screen there. So how how did that feel then, getting across that finish line? How many events did you qualify before that? Or was that your first event? Uh, that was actually my second live event because before that, um, my first event was the Salzburg World Tour event 2018, where I managed to win the Manufacturers Cup there with uh, for Nissan. But uh, yeah, as for the regional finals, it's obviously like the entry ticket for the world finals back then on 2018 because you had to be within the top 12, I believe, from each region uh, to basically qualify yourself for the world finals back then. And basically, if you were within the top 12, you would automatically get your ticket for the world final, which was basically the main goal by traveling to the original finals back then but then here when we were basically having the final day final day in my case i kind of like wanted to win it obviously like everybody else and then after becoming the Euro european champion it was uh pretty cool it was a pretty cool moment yeah well sensational moment that's huge there you can see all of you there in your gt sport Gear. Then we head to the, uh, I believe, a Nissan experience here. You've uh, got your helmet on there, looking to get into the real car. Uh, what was that all about? Um, on the 2018 season, next to the um, FIA Championship, Nissan was also having their own championship, which was called the Nissan GT Sports Cup Competition. And during that time, we had three uh, stage seasons we could basically be doing for in order to qualify our, ourselves. Mm, for the regional finals back then but then also Nissan was also taking those regional finals uh, into account to basically select their players for basically for the for the final of the Nissan Sports Cup competition as well as um, selecting the players uh, who could uh, uh, I'm sorry <laughs> who could right. basically have the track experience at Silverstone for uh, with the Nissan and in order to basically have the track experience there, you had to finish at least one time as the best Nissan driver at the end of uh, or, or, um, at the end of one season. And basically, the three of us managed to do that. And yeah, it was such a fantastic day, man. Till today, I can't forget how how amazing it was to basically drive a racing car at yeah. Silverstone, one of the legendary circuits. Man, I wish I could basically have one of those moments back again. It, it doesn't need to be a full season, but maybe just a track experience day would be so cool, man. <laughs> yeah, I could tell in the, in the sound of your voice that, you know, that is, uh, that is, uh, it was a hell of an experience. Um, you know, we actually had a conversation um, in the last episode with James, Veloce James, about 
Uh, you know, some people's goal in sim racing is to become a real racing driver, and some people's goal is to become the best sim racer in the world. And, um, you know, there's no reason as to why both of those can't be true. Uh, and there's no reason to suggest why you can't be, you know, doing both at the same time. Like, it is, uh, in my opinion, an opportunity like no other within eSports e uh, and within real sports as well. You get the opportunity, if you're a real sports driver, you can then compete at home if you want, if you're that good. And so, yeah, it works both ways um, for me personally. There. But it's great to see you getting these opportunities and that smile on your face. Uh, next picture, then, um, is you holding up a glass trophy in the air, all excited with the Michelin hat. And uh, a little explanation as to what this is. And you look you look a, a bit emotional there, if I'm honest. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, this picture was taken from the Salzburg World Cup event 2019, where I finally managed to win a Nations Cup World Cup event on that year. Because before the Salzburg World Cup event, we had three World Cup events before. The first one was at Paris. Uh, the second one was at the Nürburgring. And the third one was at New York. Uh, as for Paris, I finished second. Uh, usually I would have finished at first place if I hadn't done a stupid mistake by clipping the pit entry and therefore losing the lead after. And we were also basically driving at a track where overtaking somebody was almost impossible. It was kind of like Monaco, you could say. And as for Nova Creek one, um, I was kind of like pretty unlucky our selection we had back then we were ba basically there was a seasonal final where we were driving or using the, the street car with a specific BOP but even that BOP was a little bit broken say and the car I was kind of like getting kicked and I, uh, I picked from was basically almost one second slower than the fastest car so basically I had no chance to be uh, to make uh, to ma made it to the uh, make it to the final uh, to the grand final and as for New York wise, uh, I think a lot of you guys were, <laughs> <laughs> were yeah. watching the famous incident between myself and Igor. <laughs> yeah, I would uh, say Igor, um, again, is from this incident, from my personal perspective, like um, it was wrong what he did. Uh, he's, he's one of my friends and he's also um, a very, very nice chap in, uh, and he's very successful, you know, obviously just winning that championship this weekend. Um, but yeah, that was 100% yeah. wrong. Uh, obviously, you two being very professional, you were heated at the time. You buried the hatchet very, very quickly. He have posted an apology and, and whatnot. But what is your thoughts on that in 2020? Uh, about what exactly? <laughs> well, well, like now you look back on it, how do you feel about that incident? Uh, uh, actually, uh, on that day where we were having the grand finals at New York, obviously I was pissed. Yeah. Uh, about what happened actually because it was kind of like uh <laughs> you hit it really well my, my chance to win to win the nation's cup again you know not again but i mean to win the nation's cup but then uh as for the first move where he went to the right hand side it was completely fair it was also smart uh, from his side because i didn't even expect him to do that like that's i think where his real life motorsport experience come from like obviously before grand tourist won the 2017 Formula Esports season, he has been a racing driver before. And I think with that knowledge, he was also able to put basically his knowledge into the grand finals there. And yeah, with the second move at, I don't know, Orosh or Rodelio, whatever you guys would like to call it. <laughs> yeah. Um, that was actually a little bit too harsh, in my opinion. Like, I think he wanted to try to copy Hamilton's move on Pedal 2018 or 2017, I believe. Um, but the only yeah. difference was Hamilton was kind of like driving nine up to 10 kilometers per hour slower on the corner. But Eagle was kind of like 30 up to 40 kilometers per hour slower. And the problem with that case was if I went to the left hand side to completely avoid his car, I would have gotten a corner cut, a corner cut penalty um, from the game itself. And you can't go to the right hand side anyway. So basically there was no option for me to go for and <clears throat> that's where I had to bump ego a little bit and yeah but uh, I was kind of like telling to myself after that race that I was happy that ego was showing those moves uh, those, uh, those moves on that race already because he could have 
basically kept it for himself and shown it to the world finals instead because he has already won the Nürburgring world event and already made it to the world finals anyway but with that in mind i was also telling myself uh, uh, not telling myself uh re-watching the final race to see what i personally did wrong and uh for example my strategy was wrong like i was trying to save too much fuel which was a mistake on a high speed track like spa um maybe i could have reacted um differently on those two uh, situations and i think this was like a good moment for my um how should i say uh, for my evolve yeah for the for the development exactly yes uh, and so from from an outsider's perspective here it was fantastic for sim racing because it was the drama that we hadn't had yet on the biggest yeah. stage possible um that's true <laughs> it was it was fantastic from a perspective of you and igor because the way you both dealt with it yes you were angry but then it was dealt with in a very um adult-esque manner uh, in the end um it was like yeah it really showed that we're we're as sim racers are here and we mean business and this is as real as it gets because there was genuine emotion with it and then the yeah. cherry the cherry on top of that was it was another obstacle put in your way which told the story of will he ever get across the line and win it and at the very next event what did you go and do yeah exactly like um for me personally after that incident a lot of the let's say online users were kind of like bashing the ego saying oh he was uh break testing me or basically using dirty tactics he wouldn't have done that in a real car. Like... Let's, let's be very 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 honest here there's no way he makes that move in a real car when with the real dangers that there's the difference between sim racing and mo real motorsport um that's why I, this... I see they have to be set they have to be looked at as separate um a lot of people try yeah. and make them the same there's no way he makes that move in real world motorsport that's a fact and the sad thing is i think just recently before the new york world event or just afterwards we saw what happened to a french driver gp2 driver at spa mm. unfortunately mm. and i don't want to basically remind you everybody what happened there but uh it was a tough decision i mean for me personally why i was so upset about was uh, about the stewards back then and um, for each incident they will automatically or immediately show it on the top of uh, top of the screen kind of like saying hey the incident between you and to the other guy is going to be in uh nah it's going to be uh, investigated okay I'm so, uh, my english today ah uh. <laughs> this is oh, not sorry. your first language you're absolutely smashing it mate i wouldn't worry about it you'd be fine. you're doing really well uh, thank you <laughs> but then on my case uh there was no notification being shown up and i was kind of like asking myself hey guys what were you drinking that you didn't even see the incident between myself and ego you know and then i was kind of like waiting for the official statement kind of like saying hey this incident is going to be investigated but nothing even showed up you know yeah. and then after the race they were kind of like giving him a five second time penalty where he still managed to win the race by just you know just yeah. And I was kind of like um, uh, angry about it, you know, because if he were if he was getting those five second time penalty on the track, he would have lost more than five second penalty because after uh, serving the time penalty, he would have been to on get the camel straight as speed. well. Wouldn't it? it would have been on the camel straight. Exactly. Penalty, yeah. So it would have been. Yeah, and it, it looked from an outsider's perspective. Um, again, I guess I, I'm looking at it with rose-tinted glasses because, again, he is one of my friends. Um, but, <laughs> like, no, I, I was fully on your side, by the way. Um, like, I am impartial. I just, I, I'm just a sim racing fan at the end of the day. But he was the golden boy as well. Like, he was the golden boy of GT Sport. He was the golden boy of the McLaren Shadow Project. Like, he could do no wrong, if you like. And then, for the first time, there was some controversy. And yeah. obviously half the world decided to go and defend him and half the world was on your side. Uh, both of you within sim racing have got quite a big reach as well in terms of supporters, in terms of friends. Um, so it's, it was, it was, it was for me, I looked at it and thought, as soon as it happened, and again, this is, please don't take this the wrong way. I was like, this is brilliant. This is exactly what we need. We need some controversy. We need, to, <laughs> we need a bad boy. It needs to be. I see sim racing needs to take uh, a lesson from WWE. If this makes any sense, hear me out, please, yeah. guys. 
we need to have heroes we need to have villains we have you know as long as people are cheering or booing people it means they care about them whether they care about them in a positive manner or a negative manner they care about them and if people care about them the product becomes better the product becomes bigger more sponsors get involved more opportunities uh, uh, happen for drivers uh, that's how i see it so for me i was just like my eyes lit up like oh this is a fantastic story this is great and for me what was the best part of this story is that like i said to you you had some adversity you'd not quite got across the line and then at the very next event you went well here i am baby picking up the trophy and now we've got this image on screen so after all of that controversy after all of those hurdles you have to go through how did you feel finally putting that trophy above your head uh well before i'm going to say that i still want to i would like to say something about the new york incident of course yeah of course uh, um like obviously afterwards i was so up upset about ego but then afterwards uh we apologize to each other because from my side in my opinion i shouldn't have reacted in an emotional way on the post -po interview like i was doing it on new york back then because in my head and I, on that time i was too emotional and i shouldn't have done that and we can we apologize to each other and from that moment on we were kind of like all good like we forgot about the past and we both wanted to move on obviously uh as a friend as as friends and as well as as a rival you know because we still want to try to beat against each other as well as to improve on ourselves you know yeah. because we kind of like are kind of uh, pushing each other and um now going to the Salzburg one obviously I was so happy about winning the Nations Cup there but I was also sad about not having ego there uh, on that race you know because I wanted to try to race again because it, it was, it's always fun to race against him and I can always learn so much thing about him because he's a real life racing driver and sometimes I'm not even thinking about because this is sim racing that he could be doing those moves even on a game you know but he can do it because he's a racing driver and but watching him doing that i can also learn a lot, a lot of things from him too and then yeah it's kind of like amazing to see that. i mean it's, it's like, i mean for oh i'm sorry i'm sorry yeah. no, no I, I, it's me to butt in i'm, I'm trying to yeah so it's, it's like real madrid would not be as big football club in the world if it wasn't for barcelona does that make sense exactly so you need each other yeah yeah and um no, what else would I, uh, did I want to say? Ah, uh, oh, damn it. I forgot it. No. <laughs> That's completely my fault. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Ah, uh, oh, damn it. You wanted, you wanted no, to thought... get the victory when he was in the race with you. Yes, but... Damn it, I wanted to say something else too, but... Oh, oh no. God. So sorry. No, no, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> I'm just so, I'm so invested in this story. Like I am, I I love just talking about people's journey. So I, sorry, it's my fault that I get too excited. And um, I'm, you know, I'm just a big fan at the end of the day. Of all nah, of it's this. fine. It's fine. I guess we can now step right. on to the fight. Finally, you did lift the trophy above your head, and you can see there's a little bit of emotion. Was that because of all of the adversity you've had to go through to get to that point? Uh, maybe. Um, I would even say as a well. I'm one of those persons who don't really look uh, at the past saying, hey, because of this happened, I have to deliver now, you know? Uh, in each live event, or uh, each competition, I always want to give it my best and always approaching a, a live event with an improvement, you know, compared to the previous uh, live event. And in my personal opinion, after the spa race we had in New York, I was telling to myself, hey, you have to finally practice for the strategy for the final race because I was always too late to practice the, um, the strategy for the grand final because it was <laughs> uh, because the race we have for the grand finals lasts about 30 minutes or so and for me that's way too much <laughs> <laughs> and th therefore I always get too late and then always doing some time trial laps and then just telling to myself hey that's it you don't do anything uh, about it anymore but then after the spa race, I was I was telling to myself, hey, you, you you have to practice the strategy for the final race if you want to win it. And I was doing that, and yeah, let's say outsmarting Miyasono-san there, who was kind of like the strategy 
stretch bar, stretchy thick boy on the spa race back then. Yeah. And I kind of like outsmarting him was also uh, a satisfaction in the end too. <laughs> but still, um, yeah, it was great to see that actually. But then also on that day, I was also uh, hurting my leg. And not my leg, uh, my toe, my toe, yeah. Because of uh, hurting my toe, I wasn't able to use my shoes for the live event, so I had to use my socks uh, for the driving, which was a little bit weird. <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh, feet and uh, sim races is, is a huge topic. I tend, I don't wear socks, I wear go barefoot. Um, I know a lot of people yeah, me wear too, shoes, but... a lot of people wear socks, and yeah, it's a really, it's a really hot topic. Um, in terms of that, uh, we move on now to you st on the top step of the podium here. Uh, where was this, and how did you get onto the top step of the podium here with uh, Kaz on your left hand side? Uh, left, oh, sorry, your right hand side. Um, so, ah. where was this from? Uh, this picture was taken um, on the same weekend where we had the Tokyo World event, but this wasn't for the FI uh, Grand Tour Sport Championship, but instead it was for the uh, final race for the Supra Cup, for the GR Supra Cup, uh, organized by Toyota themselves. And for me personally, after winning the Salzburg World event, um, that therefore I was kind of like automatically qualified for the World Finals there. And then after knowing that, I was kind of like telling to myself, with my studies uh, happening on the same time, hey, you would just skip the practice for the Nations Cup. Just having some fun there but only do the practice um for the super cup instead because i really wanted to win the super cup there in the end uh which i managed to do it um luckily uh, not luckily but uh in a good way if i can say that yeah i was so happy about achieving my goal there again by winning the super cup because i just wanted to basically get rid of one competition <laughs> To have more time on my studies, you know, because I uh, I don't want to do, let's say, a championship again, where I already won it in the end because yeah. of my studies, because I don't want to spend so much time into the same championship where where I already achieved my goal there. Maximizing you know? your time. Exactly, and uh, that's why I was so happy about winning the Super Cup and just leaving it to the side and concentrating um, myself on the other side. Uh, yeah, on the other competitions there, basic. Can you um can you text Kaz and get me into the uh, get me into the um like the uh, pro am race with you? Me and you go uh, as a team. That'd be great. <laughs> That'd be cool. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll do one lap. <laughs> you do the rest. <laughs> no, I can maybe ask them about it, or maybe you can even. Ask them um, by yourself, maybe. Uh, by they, yourself, I mean. They won't like this guy. I won't fit in the rig anyway, so I wouldn't worry about it. <laughs> it's all good. Nah, you would. Nah, you would just show the famous interview you had with me, with me, kind of so. <laughs> <laughs> and they would be saying, "Yeah, yeah okay, let's invite this guy. Easy." <laughs> <laughs> let's hope it's a famous interview. Um, if I don't keep cutting it. <laughs> uh, right now we've got loads of pyrotechnics behind you. You're hoisting above your head the holy grail right now. And that is the very famous uh, trophy there. I'll let you explain it. What is this all about here then? Um, this picture was taken um, from the World Finals 2019 at Monaco, where I was participating in the Nations Cup only as Subaru unfortunately didn't make it to the Manufacturers Cup. And if you want to know why, that's because of the qualifying system I explained to you guys earlier on because Subaru was not within the top of uh, manufacturers now. on that time, unfortunately. But um, by knowing that, I was trying to concentrate myself on the Nations Cup only, obviously, because um, I didn't know on that time if I can redo the Nations Cup again, um, yeah, basically if I can do the Nations Cup again, if I don't win it on that time. Because with my studies uh, progressing forward, it's going to be a lot harder uh to basically be still involved in the whole fia championship there if you want to do uh both cups on the same time so i really wanted to give it my all and basically just win it leave it in the back and just yeah having more uh, free time basically <laughs> 
Yeah, well, for sure. Well, look, look at it here. Like, this is it. This is the world finals, you know. And you said you wanted to do it with Igor uh, in the championship. Unfortunately, he didn't get through the qualifying round, did he? He made a mistake uh, and it cost him yeah. a chance. But he was in the competition, so you officially got the, the dub over him on the biggest stage of them all, you know, the, the 2019 World Finals, and you managed to get it done uh, in Monaco as well, wasn't it? Like, that's like one of, the, one of the most prestigious places in the world for motorsport. Um, like, how did it make you feel that, you know, you, you missed out on the opportunity because he wasn't racing, um, was it Salzburg? I can't remember now, was it? Yeah, it was Salzburg, yeah, right? Yeah, Salzburg. Uh, in Monaco, he was there. He didn't have the greatest of performances, but he was still in the competition. Your nemesis, your rival, obviously it's a lot friendlier now. It's a friendly rivalry, but it's a rivalry all the same. Did it make it that extra bit special, or was you just focused on that trophy? You wanted to get that win. I don't care who I beat. Uh, uh, well, after the semi-final race I had with Igor, where he did the mistake, unfortunately, I was kind of like happy about uh, making it through the uh, final day basically competing against the other guys for the world title but also at the same time i was also sad um, about ego not making it to the final day because i re really wanted to compete against him till the final race you know uh but uh so even uh, but even so after ego has been eliminated say i was still not saying hey this is going to be easy because we still had uh, a lot of the yeah, basically, we, we had the fastest driver there in the end, you know? Yeah. Uh, especially Latkowski, Miasono, Lopez, and all the other fast drivers there, you know? So, by knowing that, I was still kind of like trying to prepare myself, uh, myself mentally about the final day. And then, just giving it everything till the end, because I really wanted to win it. Uh, I was also telling to myself, hey, even if the first race it's not going to go well um just be patient because there are like four races there and not just only one so basically you can just play smart uh maybe take your opportunity on the next race and just attack there you know instead of the is it if you only do it on the first race only uh but i have to say on that day i was kind of like a little bit lucky on the same time especially on the third race uh if you can remember it, it was with the monster let's say wishing grant to this but le mans the thought the chicanes yeah i don't know yeah and i was kind of like lucky that after overtaking world war uh on the back straight he was kind of uh, he was getting pushed wide from miasono there and miasono was getting the penalty there so i was kind of like lucky to avoid all the incident there on that time looking in the rearview then... mirror just smiling like yep crack on yeah and I'm not smiling because the track limits at Le Mans and Grand Suisse were also broken. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, that's why I always had to stay focused on not getting a penalty there. And, like, still knowing uh, when to push if the guy behind of me is closing their gap. But then also at the same time, trying to basically not risk it at uh, 100% because I was having a huge lead for the second guy. And I wanted to carry it to home, basically, and just starting the final race from pole position. And even there, just taking it, uh, just choosing the safe strategy instead of going for the fast strategy. Because I simply wanted to pull away and having the gap between me and uh, between myself and the other guys there. I think you're doing yourself a disservice, if I'm honest with you. Uh, the fact that Igor made that mistake in the qualifying rounds and still, you know, he is of the elite level and didn't manage to qualify because that shows how strong that competition was. So regardless of whether you have a long lead or regardless of whether you know the track limits are really scary and that's the only thing you have to contend with you have to contend with the very very best in the world and and you my friend you got that win you are the champion on gt sport in the world so yeah you should not do yourself a disservice there you should take all the plaudits because you bloody well deserve it um that is uh, you can take what i say with a pinch of salt i guess but yeah you did a sensational job and you beat everybody else who's the best in the world like you mentioned the australian there uh, Lakovsky and then of course uh, Lopez like Lopez was the only driver I believe ironically the final he had to go through the repercharge didn't he but he had qualified yeah. for every final race without going through the repercharge he's the only one to do that I believe until that event yeah. and he's finally hit that form actually this year at the Australian event he's really hit that top level so he's the one to watch out for but you had to contend with people like him you had to contend with uh, Lakovsky as well like it's 
yeah, you just don't do yourself a disservice, man. You smashed it. You 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 deserved it, and you were the quickest by you know by a mile in the end. Thank you. But personally, I'm always kind of like critical about my, you know, because I always want to improve. Yeah. Myself consistently, and even let's say after winning the championship day in the end, I don't want to stop myself from developing myself even further. You know, I still want to improve myself. For example, if it's for the consistency, for the speed, um, about being patient in some of those moves, um, about the overtake and stuff, I always want to improve myself consistently. And that's why I'm so critical about myself and always kind of like looking at it sometimes realistically, but also negatively to basically give me a motivation to improve myself even further uh, for the future. That is the mindset of a champion, though. Like, it, uh, it happens in boxing all of the time. A boxer will get to become the world champion, and that's it. They fall out of love with the sport because they, they, the only motivation they've ever had is the chase to get to the top of the sport. And, you know, the, the, the mindset of a real champion is how can I take what I've got now and become unbreakable, unbeatable at the top? How can I, be, you know, win the next one? and win the next one how can i become a two a three-time world champion so yeah it's a great mindset to have and i don't expect anything less from you to be honest um we spoke a few times through dms and a couple of times uh, by, uh, uh yeah, just every time it's you're very professional uh, you're always trying to get the best out of yourself and it comes across also um you know we spoke about you got over emotional um with the interview yeah. after the eagle incident it's only because you care it's only and like you say that, that was wrong i disagree i i feel like that should be how you if, if that situation played out 10 times again you should have reacted exactly the same every time i think if you if you take a minute to cool down um i think you'd lose an edge from from yourself like if you're not upset about something like that then you shouldn't be you should not be trying to be the top of that sport from in my opinion that's just my opinion um i just feel like it showed you cared it showed that you're invested in in um what you're doing and, and when you finally did eventually become the world champion a, a hell of a lot more people cared about it well you, you know for yourself on your social media twitter went absolutely ballistic <laughs> yeah you're absolutely right <laughs> it, it was made the memes were everywhere you, you're like the meme lord yeah, of sim memes. racing you got, you got lando norris and then there's mikhail it's like yeah it was it, it was sensational but it was a good story it was just a it was just a great story. Like, you know, as much as we've been saying, oh, Eagle, the villain in this situation, like, you know as well as I do, he's a lovely bloke. He's a lovely lad. Um, yeah, he is. And he he's, is. he's bloody talented. He's super talented. And he made a mistake. People make mistakes. And, you know, with the world of social media as it is right now, you get crucified for a mistake. And people don't forget mistakes. Uh, like, your championship here, if you were to make a mistake tomorrow, your mistake will outlast your championship win. That's the sad reality of this world. It, it's... Yeah. It, it's pathetic, but at the same time, it does create stories. Um, so yeah, you became the world champion, got that, got that smile on your face. And then, not only do you win the world championships, you then head to the FIA awards to pick up your award. Like, that is absolutely incredible. So talk us through the FIA awards. What award did you pick up from the FIA awards? Um, and what was your experience like? Uh, um, I mean, as the... Grand Turismo Championship we are basically driving for is also in a partnership with the FIA. Um, basically, the Grand Turismo Championship is the esports uh, title being kind of like being looked at for the pri uh, for the FIA prize giving. So basically, only the world champion uh, have been invited to the FIA prize giving there on that time. And basically, I was getting the FIA Nations Cup title and then the Toyota guys uh, the manufacturers cup won but yeah it was so unreal to see all the other champions on the same side like Hamilton wow, the Mercedes Benz we got Max on screen now he's envious of your trophy I, I would prefer your trophy <laughs> that, I don't know what's going on with his it looks like it's been it's made of chocolate and it's been left on the on the uh, windowsill with the sun beating on it all day it, I don't actually know. Yeah. Um, I like his trophy a lot because it it doesn't look it's like unique. a classic trophy if you know what I mean, you know. It doesn't. It's, it looks like some roots of a tree that's been sprayed silver, Mikhail. It, yeah, but it looks differently, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's the same with the um, trophy I received from Grand Turismo, like in at Monaco. It, it's also a different trophy. 
which is kind of like cool for me because it, if every single trophy were looking the same, it would be boring, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm a so, traditionalist. I'm a I'm a boomer, and I so I'm a, I like the. Ah, uh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. <laughs> I mean, you have a point there. You have a point there. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. I mean, for me personally, it would be cool to see some other designs for the trophies as well. But uh, again, we have to discuss about what kind of design should be chosen for <laughs> for one of those trophies. If in you got to decide, it would be a Patrick from SpongeBob trophy, wouldn't it? It'd be some nah, sort. Of, it'd it be some sort of meme. Actually, yes, it would be a meme, but. I haven't decided yet. <laughs> it'd, be, it'd, it'd be a Pepe laugh or something like that. <laughs> uh, amazing. I don't know yet. <laughs> so we've now got on screen here the rig that you were became world champion on. So you've got the uh, the uh, what is that? It's like a really old play seat. That is play seat, right? But a really old one. It's not a play seat. Uh, it's like a some sort of seat. I bought it from. I know it's some sort of seat. Or so. I can see. I got eyes. <laughs> yeah okay 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 <laughs> you got an office chair there and you've got some sort of seat fair enough move on <laughs> <laughs> okay wait 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 okay this seat um i don't know uh, wait i bought the seat from a supermarket for about 50 euros or so because it looked fancy <laughs> and uh yeah i was also thinking about when i started with sim racing hey i don't want to buy one of those play seats or let's say expensive play seats uh, out there, so I wanted to build it by, uh, with my dad together, you know. That's why you can see a self made setup yeah, being built the there with, with, um, the, um, with the gear shifter. Exactly. And basically, my dad has built this for me. Um, and a cinematic and obviously, screen. Yeah. With the OK <laughs> television. Full, okay. A, a full on, full on cinema experience. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Nah, but I'm, the only difference there is um, on the whole 2019 season, I've been using the Frostbuster, Frostbuster TGT wheel instead of the Fanatic one because I wanted to prepare myself a little bit better for the live event so that I don't ha always have to get used to the Fanatec wheel and then to the TGT wheel again. And when I come back at home, getting used to the Fanatec wheel again. So I decided to use the TGT all the time, but that's the only main difference there in terms of the setup I was using here for the for the 2019. If there was ever a picture that describes your life, it is the picture with the TGT and the uh, big screen, and then all of that paperwork with your schoolwork. You can see that all of your life is pretty much there in one picture, uh, and then you put uh, bed for the uh, for the odd occasion you get to sleep. Um, <laughs> so yeah, like the thing. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, the thing is with the new setup. Uh, after becoming becoming the Super Cup champion, they have also given me uh, wait wait one of the prizes was also this setup here you're using the uh, you are seeing there at the moment, and if you also had a closer look to it, it's kind of like the same setup we have been using for for the lighting, and with that uh, in my hands now, if you can say that, I can prepare myself even better for the live event. Which is pretty cool because I always struggled a little bit with the big TV as I was always using the small TV <laughs> before. Yeah. So um, yeah, it's pretty cool to have to set up uh, to have to set up now and kind of like practicing with it for the life of it. Yeah, for sure, it makes life a lot easier. Um, you've mentioned some prizes. I've got a, a question for you. Again, you don't have to go as uh, too far into this um, here. Obviously, I, I believe you won a, a watch um, for becoming the world champion. Also, you've got yourself prizes there for the Toyota Super Cup. Um, what's your standpoint on these championships? The production level is huge. This is just, I'm going to give my opinion first. The production level is huge for these competitions. The hours that you guys put in is absolutely mental. Do you feel like they should be investing in your future by, by having prize money for the top drivers, the top three top five maybe or maybe if it's a top 10 like it's small prizes for the lower guys but do you feel that effectively you should i this is my opinion i feel like if you win a world championships with um a game with the production level that they have here you should be able to concentrate on just sim racing for at least a year you that you should be given that next year and you should also be given the the opportunity that you should be automatically in the final for the next uh, world tour 
what is your standpoint on this? Sorry if I'm mixing my words here, uh, but what is your standpoint? We've had a lot of Twitter, um, well, not beef, but Twitter I engagement with, uh, with a few people over the last couple of um, days. So I just wanted to get, you know, the actual world champion's opinion on this. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, Yamauchi san was uh, kind of like telling us the meaning about Gran Turismo. It's uh, why he chose the Gran Turismo. Basically, Gran Turismo is kind of like traveling around the world. And that's what basically we are doing it at the moment. By kind of like traveling to so many different countries. And that's uh, what I love about Gran Turismo and the guys behind of it so much. Because they care so much about the game. Uh, and they, they are, you can really see them how much effort they are putting in into Gran Turismo to those sure. live events, as you also mentioned it before, with the high production cost. Um, with the price money, in my opinion, I think... Yeah, I mean, you have to see it in that way. For example, on last year, there were so many races we had to do in order to qualify ourselves for the... Let's say, for the first of the World event in the end. And as for this year, um, if you want to do both cups on the same time, the Nations Cup and the Manufacturers Cup one, at minimum, you have to do, uh, uh, not at, at minimum, but at mi minimum, there are 80 rounds to do there. And one round offers five slots on that day. So basically, you can do that race five times. But it's up to you if you want to do all the slots in the end. So yeah. basically, if you are doing the first slot only, getting your points, and you are basically finished with that day. That's why I say at minimum, there are kind of like 80 rounds there. But if one of those races doesn't go quite well for you in the end, you have to redo it, obviously. If that happens once every day, that's 160. It happens twice every day, it's... you know, it becomes 200. No, no, it's... You, have to, you have to time it by five. So basically, at maximum, there are four, 400 races you can do in the end. For example, but then obviously only... <laughs> If everything goes wrong till the final slot, you know? Yeah. So that's why I say at maximum, you can do 400 races there. But uh, I think with the 80 rounds we have there, you only need to have 10 rounds there anyway. I mean, it doesn't sound that much, but obviously you have to race uh, one of those rounds and you have to look at which combinations more or not so much. And then getting basically your po amount of points uh, which is needed in order to qualify yourself for the life event. And, uh, and then, for example, the first slot starts at 5 p.m. on German time. And the last slot starts at half past 10, approximately. Christ. So basically, it's about five and a half hours. You are kind of like putting time into the official races there. And then additionally, you have to think about how much practice time you're putting it in order to prepare yourself well enough for the life, uh, not for the life, for the, for the online races, you know. So with that in mind, um, in my opinion, if they would kind of like lower the amount of races we have to do in order to qualify ourselves for the life event, then I would be totally fine of not getting any sort of prize money at all. Because, for example, in my case, next to the sim racing stuff, I'm also starting my case in engineering, which is quite intense yeah. in terms of the time schedule and also what, uh, what else I have to do there. And then also for the other guys, they are having a family maybe, um, working, That's also what I was studying. Gonna say. It like makes it almost impossible for someone like myself with you know three children. Um, it, it, it basically, this current system only serves to a particular demographic. Uh, either they are uh, under the age of 18 and still at school, or they're like yourself, um, into the sort of 20s, but you're still studying. Uh, but you, you know, it, it, it caters to the demographic that um, I, I assume. Are you living on your own or are you living with um, your parents still? Uh, with my parents. Yeah, so you're living with your parents. And again, this is not me, uh, don't take this the wrong way. But you don't really have much dependencies, much, many responsibilities, if you like, in terms of financial responsibilities. Um, whereas someone like myself, you know, everything I have to pay for. So it kind of yeah. serves to a specific demographic. Um, and 
I don't know. GT Sport are very, they're traditionalists. Look at the, the design of their trophy, um, for instance, for what you, you're holding right now in front of the world final poster. Um, yeah. the, the events are very traditionalistic. They look the same. Like they, you're all wearing the same gear. Um, it's all, it, it's, it's GT Sport's way or, or not at all, if that makes any sense. Like you're not, no one's really allowed to mention what teams they take part in. Your name in the Nations Cup, it's very rarely your names are even mentioned. So it's, it is it is all about the game ultimately. That's how I that's how it's come across to me. Uh, for me personally, I'm also a little bit sad that we can't really represent our sim racing team on the live event. For example, in my case, for Team Redline or for Lopez, Mangano, and Susvilla for Williams Esports. Well, you guys are lucky. I mean, that would be so you've got you've got quite a reach where people know that just by watching, like they know who you represent. But it's the smaller teams that I feel for. They're the ones that really get hurt. Because yeah, like, exactly. they already don't have the bigger reach anyway, um, so you know, not being mentioned on a, a you know a live stream that effectively by the time it's elapsed a couple of weeks out there on the market, it's uh, it's close to a million if not more views. They're just not getting any exposure at all, so it doesn't help anyone. And I don't think uh. I, GT Sport. I don't think they understand that if they help grow esports teams, if they uh, help pay these drivers so they can improve the pool of talent becomes bigger um but then also these drivers because they're dedicating their time they become streamers they become youtubers because they got time to you know produce the content then the gt sport product itself becomes bigger because more people are watching these individuals so i it, this is how i see it so i i, I feel like they, they have to earn some sort of money I, to be fair Mikhail, i think we could probably talk about this all week but um unfortunately <laughs> we're gonna run out of time here i think uh, so, <laughs> so i'm gonna bring it to the final question with you um what is the future for Mikhail Hizal? what is 2020 and beyond for you in terms of what career path and uh, sim racing are they both gonna merge are they gonna do it at the same time what are, what is the future for you um as for this year i have basically no idea if I can even participate in one of those live events because the fourth and the fifth semester is going to be so intense in, in, terms, of, in terms of the time schedule so that uh, I don't really know if I can basically be there and participate on a live event like the fourth semester is going to uh, let's say be involved with so many projects we have to do the fifth semester uh, on the fifth semester, I have to do an internship for about 20 weeks. And then, I mean, let's say with the time schedule of the online FA championship, um, then the live event schedule. Like, realistically, I have no idea if I can do, do uh, if I can do the, uh, let's say, the online championships as well as participating there on a live event. But um, if I have the time for that, um, Obviously, I will try to go for the Manufacturers Cup title this year and maybe also getting the title from the FIA Motorsport Games because last year um, I was representing Germany there Yeah. but yeah, doing a stupid mistake on the final race and finishing on 6th place there in the end uh, This year I would like to change that <laughs> obviously if I have the chance mm -hmm. but um, if that's not even the case then maybe trying out a little bit iRacing uh, with the support of my team because I really would like to participate in one of those uh, 12 hour or 24 hour race uh, you know? yeah, it's not worth it trust me we we uh, we were two and a half laps ahead of the whole field at Bathurst um, two weeks ago and eight, eight, hour, eight and a half hours into the race and we binned it into a wall <laughs> and it was oh. race over we were yeah, eight and a half hours two and a half laps ahead of everyone in the field and we died um, uh, yeah, that, but I mean, it's a whole different. You'd love it, actually. It is a whole different, um, a whole different world. It really is the endurance races, and you should probably talk to to Bono. Get you and Bono together. He'd be great for you to learn from. Um, it'd be great. Yeah, he would be great for you to learn from in terms of iRacing racing. Um, and a couple. We're actually getting far too specific here, but yeah, you should definitely give it a go. <laughs> um, that's for sure. You you would absolutely love it. Yeah, probably because I really like to see the. I mean, yeah, I'm already. I'm also in the team Discord of my um, uh, of my team, Team Redline, and I'm always seeing how much effort uh, my teammates are putting to those endurance races. You know, like comparing their times, uh, sharing some setups, and I can see the support and the effort those guys are putting for in order to 
basically do well and on, uh, on that important race. And I mean, even when the race is live, uh, kind of like the team support, you know, that's what fascinates me about um, those endurance races in the end, as well as the Manufacturers Cup. Kind of like sharing information with your teammates and then try to go for the best results you can get there, you know. Individual and that's what I really like. It's amazing. But to succeed yeah. with, with, with people you can share it with, is there's no better feeling. There is exactly. no better feeling. I played um, a very good level of football for, for many number of years. And I, I will never ever get that, that, that feeling back of the camaraderie when you succeed with, with other people. Yeah, and that's what um, that's why I really would like to try out, uh, let's say those endurance races with my teammates, because I really would like to basically share my joy, uh, 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 share my joy with the other guys. For example, saying, "Hey guys, we won it. We just won the 24 hours of I don't know of Spa, or maybe Daytona, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever." Flashbacks. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> Oops, sorry. <laughs> that, that race is just finish it. <laughs> and if you finish it, you, I, I went, we did, we finished it. And I went absolutely nuts. I was screaming. I was tired. I did a whole 24 hour stream as well. I've never streamed more than three hours and that killed me, but it was so worth it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you should definitely, definitely uh, get involved with that. Um, I'm very much looking forward to watching your journey progress this year. Um, I would like to say thank you very much for being on the show. I want to wish you all the very best of luck with your um, with your uh, education. I would love to see you win the World Tour Finals again. Uh, but there's probably going to be you know three or four people just like you were last year trying to take Eagle's crown. They're going to be trying to take your crown. So I'm very interested to see how that story plays out. But just want to say a huge thank you. Thank you very much for coming on, Mikhail. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah, thank you, guys. thank you, uh, mate, for having me here. It's a real pleasure and an honor for me to basically tell about myself here. And I hope I will have another opportunity to basically discuss with you about some of my other, uh, yeah, let's say, um, oh, wow. yeah, what a great ending, man. <laughs> Kimi, Kimi Raikkonen and Bois. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, um, what? Uh, I, I think what? I think this definitely will be a follow-up for sure because I feel like we could probably talk forever uh, about sim racing in general. It's been over an hour. Wow, crazy to look at the time uh, there. But yeah, again, it's been a pleasure having you on. Episode number four, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully you did enjoy that. If you did, please leave a like and give me some comments in the chat there as to what you particularly enjoyed. And if there's anybody you want to see um, on this show, say this is number four, I want to continue it as long as you lot will still watch it. Um, yeah, let me know in the comment section below if you want to see, well, let's just say, if you want to see a part two here with Mikhail, we're definitely up for doing that. Um, and, and let me know also who else you would like to know a little bit more about in sim racing. But anyway, I've been Actual Vision. Thank you very much for watching and I will catch you all next time on the Driver Spotlight. Bye-bye. Yeah.